Alright everybody, and welcome back to King's Quest 6, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow. When last we left off, we had uh, talked to the ferryman about the uh, islands, and we had learned that there was quite a bit of uh, recent unrest here in the land of the Green Isles. We also spoke to this person uh, in the uh, bookstore, where we're at right now, who was uh, Jalo, the court jester, court clown. And as it turns out, he had barely spoken to Kasima either since she returned and she's been uh, sequestered in mourning. But he doesn't trust uh, the Wazir either. Also, most importantly perhaps, we heard from the ferryman that the pawn shop owner has a magical map that will allow us to, in theory, travel to other islands. Well, we're kind of stuck here right now, so we might as well see if we can find some way to travel about. Better than being stuck here, staring at Ali's books. No offense, man, you run a good shop, but I mean, it's kind of boring around here, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, we're gonna go see if he'll be willing to sell us Yonder map. We only have a copper, though, so... Eh, maybe, maybe it's not worth much these days. No one seems to want that magical stuff. Good day! Ah, creepy man's here. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good day, sir. The old man just glares at Alexander and does not reply. It's not very nice of you. This is the guy. We saw him in the uh, bookstore earlier. Ooh, and his eye glints too. Must be, uh, must be a local thing. Who knows? So, uh, I was told you had a magic smap. Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. It was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. Anyway, the magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. The wizard was quite old and feeble and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It is a very valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. I see. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, but since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. How about one copper coin? It's foreign currency. Might be worth something to a collector, you know. You never know. I have this copper coin. Will it serve in exchange for the map? An interesting enough piece, but it is not nearly valuable enough to trade for this map. In fact, I would say it is about the worth of our own copper. The oh. only items in the store that I could let go for the price of a single copper are the four simple items I normally display on the front counter. Hmm. Well, if I can't have the map, then I suppose one of the counter items will do. As you wish. Ah, uh, Alexander. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter near the map to make his selection. Always one to settle. Man, we have this map here now. I don't think he's just going to let us have it, though. A magic map lies on the pawn shop's counter. You sure we can't have the map? How about that map? Oh, no. A single coin would never do in exchange for the magic map. Please, choose from one of my other four counter items, sir. Well, I don't know. These are all pretty, uh... You feeling okay there, buddy? All right, well, these other items are all pretty strange looking. I don't know that we really need a... Was this a mechanical nightingale, a flute, a Bob Ross brush? I don't know. Well, we were told that Cosima has a nightingale, and this is a nightingale. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. So we have this mechanical nightingale. Alright, well we just got this mechanical nightingale, so uh, let's give it a try, see what it does. A mechanical nightingale's hard tin body doesn't feel yeah, anything like a real bird's soft yeah, that wasn't that wasn't, wasn't quite my intention there, dude, but thanks for the description there. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and listens to its sweet, sunny tune. Right in the shopkeeper's face!
This is like one of those uh, pull string toys you'd get as a kid and you were already kind of bored with it by the time you got it home. Maybe that's just me. Anyways. So, uh... Well, what do we really have in trade? I don't suppose you'd want a rabbit's foot. Would you be interested in making a trade for this merchant? Hmm, a rabbit's foot. I do not believe I could use that. I see. Why did I take this? I'm carrying around a damn rabbit's foot. <sighs> well, I don't want to get rid of my only calling card here, but it is made of gold. This How about this ring? Will you take a fine piece of foreign jewelry for it? Would you be willing to take my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, it is only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Yeah. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for gold. Ah, and a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Oh, you. now you tell me. You're very kind, and I'll remember about the map. Seems like that's the kind of thing you'd mention. Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. You know they're free, right? The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Now, what do you put in these mints anyway, man? Maybe I should try some of these mints. Seconds later, in the castle... Master! I follow Prince Alexander as you... wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained... I just reprieved... He just got a magic map. You know, one of those. That chest hair, though. You fool! You've been eating those mints again! I ordered you to stop that! Yes. <laughs> Master! Now, what is this about a magic map? With a map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as quickly as... <laughs> quickly as I can! I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar, I can't have him stirring things up now. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... Well, somebody doesn't like the idea of us traveling around. Alright, well, uh, let's go try out Yonder Magic Map. Apparently, uh... Alhazred's none too happy we have it, for some reason. Guess he really doesn't want us going and looking around. What's this? There's a bird up here. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Well, that's uh, subject to debate, I suppose. It's a nice birdie. Hello, nightingale. What a lovely tune you sing. The nightingale only looks at Alexander suspiciously and continues to sing. The bird is suspicious of my motives. Uh, I'm a pre- Look, I have a nightingale too. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a real animal charmerer person. So, are we friends now? Hello, little nightingale. Of what do you sing? The nightingale only looks at Alexander curiously and continues to sing. Can we take the nightingale? Although the nightingale seems interested in Alexander, 
she would never allow him close enough to grab her. I see. I don't know if we'd have anything else a nightingale would want. How about some mint? Alexander shows the object to the bird, hoping to interest her. It seems that the nightingale is no lover of the taste of peppermint. That's what I love about this game. It has a message for pretty much everything you can try to do. You know, most adventure games don't bother to do that, but, uh... Yeah, I just love that about this game, that it gives you uh, feedback for everything you're going to do. Anyway, we're on this uh, adorable little beach here, so how about we uh, give our magic map a little test here? Alexander pulls out his magic map. Oh, wow, that's nice. Uh, okay, so we're on the Island of the Crown. We know that. The Isle of the Crown lies at the south of the map. Okay, so we have the Isle of Wonder. I think we were told about that. And the Sacred Mountain and the Beast. They all look pretty interesting, I suppose. There's a small island labeled Isle of the Beast on the east side of Alexander's map. And this, uh, these must be the island, the, if we, yeah. Fuck it, I can't talk. If we get out of here, you can see some mountains off in the distance here. So those must be the mountains. Alexander on this island way way up here those must be some really big mountains you know well let's go uh, have a look Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation Whee! huh well that's a little underwhelming it's, it's just an island that's a giant mountain there appears to be no way past the cliffs Though roughly hewn, the cliffs do not provide regular handholds for climbing, and they seem otherwise impenetrable. I see. Well, there's an obvious little message here on the wall. There appears to be something etched into the face of the cliff. Alexander decides to get closer. Ignorance kills. Wisdom elevates. Kills. Okay. Nothing Sorry, happens. That. So this is actually part of the game's copy protection, these puzzles right here. Uh, the answers to these puzzles are in the guidebook to the Land of the Green Isles, which came with the game and also tells you a little bit about the lore. You know, back in the days before there was stuff like Sekiram and you know, whatever they use nowadays, usually uh, like a digital store like Steam or something like that, that's your copy protection. Um, a lot of the copy protection was manual. So yeah, if you needed to progress, you needed the manual. We will get to that later on, because we don't need to go up there just yet. So we have a feather down here. Alexander notices an unusually large, coal black feather lying on the beach. Okay, well, uh, it's an adventure game. Let's pick it up. Alexander takes the feather. And we got a flower over here. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong, skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. Well, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot to do on this here island. We can't go, uh, can't go anywhere on this tiny ass little beach here. You know, I'm starting to feel ripped off about this map. I'm all just saying, just saying. Alexander pulls out his magic map. All right. Well, uh, well, the island of the sacred mountain was a bust. How about we try the Isle of Wonder? Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Oh, yeah. That's where I like it. Oh, God. Well, I'm already seeing oyster beds, and I can already tell this is going to be an island full of puns. One of the oysters is sitting up in bed and doesn't look very happy. He seems to be the only one who can't sleep. I see. It's a literal... Mm. A in literal... the oyster's mouth, Alexander can see a glint of white. Hmm. That's interesting. So an island of puns. We got some stuff floating in the water here. This little purple thing. A string of letters floats in the water. The letters spell out, where are you going? Alexander's heard of alphabet soup, but this is ridiculous. Indeed. Well, that's strange. So how are you doing, buddy? Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Mind your own business. Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep. I have a terrible in my mouth. Yeah, tell me about it. So, uh, maybe you should see a dentist. What's wrong with your mouth? No offense, but it hurts too much to talk. I see. 
Well, uh, I might be able to read you a bedtime story from this fascinatingly boring book. If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. No! Hey, that would be great! Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40... You know, I feel like we're really moving up in the world now that we're reading stories to oysters who can't sleep of of in literal uh, oyster beds here. Fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Ooh, Ooh what's that? Don't go get that open your mouth again! Yields a gilded minnow of precise measurements. 2,069 oh, drills by 3,023 and 6 sevenths puns, not punts, as might be expected. This is not to say, however, oh, in any sense How much did they pay poor Robbie Benson to read deviations this? deviations in mean temperature of 5 or 6 dregs or so. Mm. There's a large pearl inside the oyster's mouth. Perhaps the pearl is what's keeping the little fellow awake. I see, we could use a pearl. Indicate a fabrication or derivation sufficiently broad enough to exacerbate the conclusions uncovered in due course with regards to the dimensions, consistency, mass, or thickness inherent in the menial suckling grouse. What the hell? Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. You know, it's entirely possible I'm just incredibly ignorant. Yeah, calm down. Bye. Calm down. Ah, uh, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. Yes, quite. Never, uh, never speak again. So I might be incredibly ignorant, but I, uh... Does any of that even make sense? Like, is that just like a bunch of random words that are strung together to form incredibly boring sentences? Let's go ahead and make ourselves a little save here, because I'm going to try to make a grab for these yonder letters. And I don't know if you noticed, but the waters around here are not exactly friendly to unwary feet. Oh, now it's coming closer to me. See, I didn't even have to risk my life. Thank you. Alexander picks up the object floating in the water. It appears to be a string of letters. They say, where are you going? If only I knew. Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Alrighty, well, we have a pearl now, and that's got to be worth something. The flawless pearl is the largest Alexander's ever seen. Alexander has a small imagination. Well, we were told if we found anything valuable, we could get our ring back. And I know we just left, but I mean, you Alexander know. Pulls out his a pearl map. is indeed valuable, and it is the largest we've ever seen. Because we've never seen pearls before. Anyway, maybe Alexander Mr. Pawn Shop Man will be happy if we bring him this uh, pearl. Not enough for a pearl necklace, and probably not worth as much as gold, but still. He's, he's our good friend, he's our buddy, he, he said nice things to us once or twice. A man can dream, okay? Why don't you just dump on this pot? Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. I see. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. True that, true that. All right, well, we have a little ink bottle. Alexander's carrying a little ink bottle. It appears to be empty. Well, that's cool, I guess. Uh, skipped into people's trash, taking their little glass bottles. So, uh, I don't know. How, might, how much could you even fit in here? Alexander shakes the bottle and imagines he hears a faint swishing sound, hmm. but decides he is mistaken. There's something in here? Alexander decides to open the empty ink bottle. It's... Whoa! There's a hole in my stomach now. The ink bottle isn't empty at all. It's full of invisible ink. Wow-wee! Not very strong, but not bad. 
I like how he just brushes off the fact that invisible ink is a thing that makes things invisible. He's like, eh, not very strong, but uh, whatever, you know. Anyway, well, this is literal invisible ink that makes things invisible temporarily. I, I start to think this uh, wizard guy was kind of a kind of a scam. Anyway, now that we're done pawing through his trash. Good day, Prince Alexander. And good day to you, whatever your name was, my good merchant friend. Uh, so, um, we got this pearl here, and, uh, can we have our ring back, please? I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. You're a good man, whatever your name is. This guy, by the way, this guy here actually voices Lee in um, the Walking Dead game. I don't know the I don't know his name offhand. If I remember, I'll put his name on the screen. But he does a lot of voice acting, quite a bit, as a matter of fact. So we were uh, sifting through your trash, and we found this ink bottle. I found this bottle in the pot outside. <laughs> that would make sense, since that is where I dumped it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I love making Alexander look like an idiot. It amuses me. Um, so uh, you want this flower? Would you be interested in making a trade for this merchant? Oh no, thank you. Okay, well, let's let's quit wasting this poor bastard's time. Let's get the hell out of here. Well, well, we got a pearl and we have a string of letters. Alexander is carrying, oddly enough, a sentence. It says, where are you going? I have no idea why anyone would possibly need this, but there it is. So now you know. Well, let's get the hell on uh, back to Yonder Beach here. Yeah? And I guess we can uh, explore more of the Isle of Wonder. At least we can go somewhere on that island. Not so much for the island of the Sacred Mountain. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Ah, the agony! All right, and I think we can go ahead and call this video here. We're going to explore the Isle of Wonder in the next video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the shorter video format. Uh, I know some of you guys are like myself and prefer longer videos. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys will like it. I don't know. Like I said, everything's an experiment around here. I've been doing this for a long time, and I never quite get it right. But, you know, we have fun. We do stuff. We have fun and seasons in the sun. That's a sad song, especially when Nirvana sings it. Anyways, carry on, kids. I'll see you in the next episode when we, we explore this rather tropical-looking island. See you later, guys. Alexander doesn't need That's to carry not the right the button. Weight of a rock. See you later, guys.